Adapting a novel for the big screen has always been a tricky task. Delia Owens' murder mystery coming-of-age novel, Where the Crawdads Sing, which has been sold over 12 million copies and was chosen for Reese Witherspoon's book club selection, set expectations high. Though the movie vividly reflected the book through its talented cast, setting, and amazingly composed soundtrack, it omitted some important plot details. Owens' book tells the story of Kaya, played by Daisy Edgar Jones, who suffers the maltreatment of her alcoholic father that drove her mother and siblings away. When her father disappears, she's left to survive in the marsh, alone and shoeless. Kaya eventually learns to read and write from her lover Tate, portrayed by Taylor John Smith, and later publishes a book. She's mocked as the marsh girl for her wildness, a label that ultimately affects her trial of the murder of Chase Andrews, her former lover. While ever faithful to its source material, the film version of Where the Crawdads Sing does diverge in a few places. So, if you're wondering what details you may have missed in the film vis-a-vis -vis the book, you've come to the right place. But of course, before we proceed on that, make sure first that you subscribe to our channel and you smash that notification bell for more updates on this. Now, here are some of the most pressing differences between the book and movie. Kaya's Childhood As with any book-to-screen adaptation, some of the novel's more detailed storylines must be condensed. The section that gets the most chopping is Kaya's Childhood, which takes up several chapters in the book, but only about 20 minutes of the movie. This means much of the context for Ma's exodus from her family and the maltreatment by Pa that forces all of his children but young Kaya to leave is erased. As the book explains, the couple's marriage was ravaged by the Great Depression, which led to Pa's gambling addiction and alcoholism. The film doesn't provide a reason for Pa's abusive nature, nor does it flesh out the close-knit bond Kaya shares with her older brother Jody. Kaya's arrest in the murder of Chase Andrews also happens far earlier in the movie, which frames her childhood anecdotes as flashbacks told to her lawyer rather than its own segment. Kaya's literary career I wasn't aware that words could hold so much. Kaya says in both the book and movie, after Tate teaches her to read. In the months after becoming literate, Kaya begins drawing and writing about the nature that surrounds her in the marsh. Both the novel and movie have Tate provide Kaya with a list of potential publishers so that her work can be seen. In the book, Tate shares this list after he's already left for college and return as a means of reconciling with Kaya. The film has Tate making this gesture, one that Kaya doesn't consider, until she needs the money to pay back taxes on her property. Before he heads to school, facing foreclosure, Kaya is motivated to get her novels published for her own financial security rather than simply as a means of sharing her insights with the world. Tate proves to be a wealth of knowledge for Kaya. In addition to teaching her how to read and get her books published, the book version of Tate also explains to Kaya what her period is. This scene is mercifully missing from the movie adaptation. Chase's Engagement when Tate leaves for college, his and Kaya's relationship temporarily ends, providing an opening for Barclay Cove's most problematic bachelor, and to Chase Andrews, who romances Kaya in secret while publicly referring to her as the Marsh Girl and talking about her in a derogatory manner. In the book, Kaya discovers that Chase is engaged after seeing his wedding announcement in the newspaper. The film makes this reveal decidedly more cinematic by having Kaya run into Chase and his friends outside of a grocery store, one of whom identifies her as Pearl, Chase's fiance. The detail of Kaya and Chase's romance and falling out. In the movie, it makes it look like Chase Andrews completely pursued Kaya, and she just went over it over time because she didn't want to be alone. But in the book, things happen differently. Years after Tate leaves and Kaya remains heartbroken, she notices Chase, someone she is attracted to and curious about. To quote the book, her body watched Chase Andrews, not her heart. However, Chase proves to be a selfish lover in both mediums. But in the movie, it's not clear that Kaya pursued Chase in her own way. Additionally, when it comes to their relationship falling out, in the movie, she meets Chase's fiancé in person. Whereas in the book, she finds out through a newspaper announcement. How the investigation of Chase Andrews is presented Book readers of Where the Crawdads Sings were likely the most thrown off the most about the fact that the movie begins with Kaya being pursued by the police soon after Chase Andrews' lifeless body is found. 
In the book, Kaya is not brought in by investigators until the latter half of the story, because in between the story of her life, the story turns to a pair of cops investigating the murder and finding clues that lead them to placing her own trial every few chapters. The main reason for this change seems to be a way to provide a framing device for Kaya, to be the first person narrator and reflect on her life story as the trial goes on, whereas the book was told from a third person ominous point of view. Jumpin had a larger role in the book. Sterling Mesa Jr. Jumpin plays a key role in the movie as a convenience store owner that Kaya develops a relationship with, whereas he is watching her back, buying muscles from her. Or his wife, Mabel, is encouraging her to go to school, as Kaya lives a lonely life in the marsh. They become almost family to her. This is overall true to the book, except the movie overlooks the book's greater discussions on Jumpin being a black man in the South in the 1960s. In the book, there's a number of scenes that touch on the racism Jumpin deals with a store owner. One time in particular, Kaya helps Jumpin fend off some town bullies. Kaya's age gap with Tate the movie has a lot of ground to cover, from Kaya's childhood to adulthood, and while it signifies which year is it throughout, how old is Kaya when she meets and starts to become romantically involved with Tate is not clear to audiences. It feels like this might have been ignored on purpose, because in the book, Kaya is 14 and Tate is 18. When their first cute feather back and forth take place, at the point in the novel when they almost have intercourse, Kaya is 15, Daisy Edgar Jones most certainly does not look 15 during those scenes. Tate inspiring Kaya to publish her book. In the movie and the book, Tate empowers Kaya to sending in her drawings to a publisher and write books about her findings of shells and such in the marsh, which she follows through on later on. However, they happen during different points between the two. In the movie, it happens when Kaya and Tate are first together, prior to him leaving for college and disappearing on her. And in the book, it happens after he returns and Kaya is with Chase. In turn, the book gives Tate more credit for being someone who truly cares for Kaya and her interests no matter who she is with. And perhaps it's that kindness that contributes to Kaya returning to him after the crime trial is over. The Ending don't fret, book purists, the surprising twist ending of Crawdads, in which it's revealed that an exonerated Kaya did, in fact murder Chase, remains intact. However, the way that an advanced age Tate discovers this revelation shifts in the book. Tate discovers a poem written by Amanda Hamilton, the poet Kaya often quotes underneath their floorboards titled The Firefly. The piece contains a metaphor about female fireflies killing their mates and reads as a thinly veiled confession. Tate also finds the shell necklace that Chase was wearing in the house before his demise, leading him to realize that Kaya did commit the crime. Of course, this means that Amanda Hamilton was a pseudonym that his old deceased wife used for her poetry. The film takes Amanda Hamilton out of the equation. Instead, Tate finds a journal with sketches of himself, Kaya and Chase alongside the shell necklace taped to a page. In both the book and movie, Tate vows to keep Kaya secret, disposing of the shell into a rising tide. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and smash that notification bell for more episodes.